The gospel this morning comes from the book of Matthew in the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the 12, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A church in Portland, Oregon offers this welcome statement on their website. We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, widow, gay, straight, filthy rich, dirt poor, crying newborns, brokenhearted, or in need of a safe place. We welcome you if you can sing like Boselli or if you can't carry a tune in a bucket. You're welcome here if you're just browsing, or just woke up, or just got out of jail. We extend a special welcome to those who are over 60 but not grown up yet, to teenagers who are growing up too fast. We welcome soccer moms, NASCAR dads, latte sippers, vegetarians, and junk food eaters. We welcome you if you're having problems or you're down in the dumps, or if you don't like organized religion. If you blew your offering money at the casino, you're welcome here. We offer a special welcome to those who think the earth is flat, work too hard, don't work, can't spell, or are here because grandma is in town and wanted to come to church. We offer a special welcome to those who could use prayer right now, had religion shoved down your throat as a kid, or got lost in traffic and ended up here by mistake. We welcome tourists, seekers and doubters, bleeding hearts, and you. Welcoming and hospitality is an important part of our faith. In this morning's gospel reading, Jesus uses the word welcome six times in two sentences. As a church, we spend a lot of time thinking about hospitality. We make sure our buildings are easily accessible by building wheelchair ramps, and by installing listening systems. We wear name tags, have greeters at our front door, and serve fair trade coffee at coffee hour. We want everyone to feel welcome and accepted in our worship spaces. Then 2020 happened. We suddenly find ourselves in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Our buildings are closed. The church has been deployed. We are no longer welcoming people into our buildings. We're out on the front lines. We are learning new ways of welcoming and reflecting the love of God and Christ into our communities and the world. We are learning again what it means to practice radical hospitality. This pandemic has made glaringly obvious the inequalities and inequities and injustices that exist in our society. These are often due to one's ethnicity, gender, economic status, or sexual orientation. We may despair at how some in power seem to consider the lives of some of our neighbors to be disposable. We may feel overwhelmed by the systemic sin that surrounds us and helpless to change it. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus says, Whoever gives even a cold cup of water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Giving a cold drink of water sounds simple enough, but simple is not always easy. A geologist named Scott Warren knows just how difficult it can be. Scott lives out his faith by volunteering for a small organization called no mas muertes, no more deaths. The goal of this organization is simply to prevent migrants from dying in the desert by leaving f food and jugs of water along the remote desert trails. 
The Sonoran Desert of Arizona is a dangerous stretch of wilderness. Between 1999 and 2018, more than 3,000 migrants have died from exposure and dehydration. In 2017, Scott was arrested by Border Patrol agents and charged with three felony accounts for his humanitarian efforts. He faced the possibility of 22 years in prison for providing cold cups of water. Thankfully, this story has a happy ending. Scott was acquitted of the charges after just two hours of jury deliberation. This kind of radical hospitality is challenging and holy work. Ultimately, this work is about love. It's about the love of an awesome God who humbled himself to come down to us in our broken, sinful world to be beaten, mocked, and killed so that we may be forgiven and made whole. It is this love that enables us to go out into the world to serve our neighbors and share God's love with those whom the Holy Spirit puts in our path. Because God first loved us, he welcomed us in spite of our flaws. And because of the Holy Spirit poured in, into us at our baptism, we are able to welcome and acknowledge others as beloved children of God. One day, a young woman was walking home from work when she saw a little girl standing on a street corner begging. The little girl's clothes were paper thin and dirty. Her hair was matted and unclean, and her cheeks were red from the cold. The woman dropped a few coins into the begging bowl, gave the girl a smile, and walked on. As she walked, she started to feel guilty. How could she go home to her warm house with its full pantry and well-supplied wardrobe while this little girl shivered on the street? The young woman also began to feel angry with God. She let her feelings be known in a prayer of protest. God, how can you let these sorts of things happen? Why don't you do something to help this girl? And then, to her surprise, God answered. He said, I did do something. I created you. Now, there are many different kinds of deserts and many different ways to provide a cold cup of water to those in need. We are all called to serve in different ways, and none of us can change the world by ourselves. Mother Teresa once said, we can do small things with great love. These small gifts of hospitality are like a pebble thrown into a pond. The ripples start small and grow and spread, and we will never know where they end up. In closing, I would like to share with you the lyrics to a song sung by the so Sojourners community. Is there room in this city for the lowly and poor? Is there room in this city for the homeless and their friends? Is there room in this city for the broken little ones? Well, come in, Jesus child. We want to make some room. Amen.